so that cycle of life is, I guess, what you're trying to bring back to the community, which is something, you know, we talk a lot about here at Seeds of Awareness. We, we sort of call it wholeness, the wholeness, wholeness of nature mm. and how everything has its place in nature. Everything has a balance. Um, everything in nature is recycled. Nothing, nothing's wasted, is it? Like in, in a forest, um, I'm just reading this book right now called The Hidden Life of Trees and it's remarkable, like literally nothing, not a square inch of space, no dead matter, no living matter, nothing in nature is wasted. Mm. Yet here come along humans and we build these broad, sprawling cities and we build our machinery and we take from nature what we need or we clear nature if it's in the way and um, we, we use the vital resources out of the ground, we put them into machines which pump pollution in the air um, we exploit animals beyond what I think you know most people would agree is our right to do so, mm. killing them without respect, using every you know whatever, um, even our um, food we've been disconnected from majorly. Like we, there's no relationship with the plants anymore, which probably our tribal ancestors definitely would have had. It's it's just we go to the supermarket. We've had no, we don't know where it's been grown. We don't know how long it's been sitting there. We just we just grab it and don't think mm -hmm. about it and eat it. It's just we've really disconnected ourselves from the cycle of life, haven't yeah. we? In yeah. in every way, like and cities are probably the epitome of like the height of um, the pinnacle. Of, uh, um, that's the word I'm looking for of that disconnect because mm. it's just a concrete jungle. Mm. Um, we've replaced a real jungle with a concrete jungle yeah. and it's anti-life in so many ways. It doesn't even allow, you know, grass to grow on the road or like doesn't, it wouldn't even allow a bit of moss to grow in a building. Like it's just, yeah. it bores nature. And so you guys are, you know, I think trying to reconnect with that cycle is really, really crucial because the way humans have disconnected from it, we've pushed the delicate ecosystems of this planet to their brink, haven't we? Yeah. Like with the way we've treated the oceans, the... Um, you, you know, every every part of this planet, we've this plundered it to its absolute uh, depths, mm. and so that's why I love what you guys are doing because it's that focus on reharmonizing, bringing us back into that cycle of life, yeah. but starting from a really practical place. Mm. How can we just give? Because you, you know, you can't. It's going to take a long time to re-educate and all this sort of stuff. So give people really, really practical solutions and that's what i think those urban farms like it starts with growing it in our in our kitchen yeah which you guys provide then yep. you guys provide these urban farms um is that sort of like the driving one of the driving motivating forces behind you just to give mm. people access to that reconnection to yeah. the cycle of life yeah. we i mean we value so much um the emotions that are sparked from growing food and the connections to that mm. um I guess a good way to put it is like the way society is becoming more robotic. Mm -hmm. Some people have never, ever grown their own food. Yeah. And this yeah. is something for, you know, if you look back 100 years ago and before 100 years ago, yeah. everybody is providing their own food. Mm -hmm. And then in the last period of time, some people have, haven't had that experience and yeah. don't even understand why it would yeah. be good. Yeah. And our feedback is always uh, for the people that grow mushrooms mm. in our mushroom boxes, they say, we say, what's the best? The flavor, the nutritional benefits. Mm -hmm. like, it's always the experience of growing your mm -hmm. own mushrooms. Yep. And you know, I think most people wouldn't have even predicted that before they did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, because there's something about um, the way it tastes, the way you've mm -hmm. had an attachment to it yep. when, you, when it's food you've grown yourself. Yep. So we're really um, very satisfied we can enable people with that feeling again, mm -hmm. which often sparks them to be, then go out and start planting a fruit tree, mm -hmm. or goes out and um, um, sees food in different light yeah. and starts to ask questions um, about where it mm -hmm. comes from, looking at ingredient mm -hmm. lists and understanding the importance of transparency. Mm -hmm. And it's such a good point you made there, because like that connection that we've lost to food is something that most people don't even know they've lost, isn't it? Mm. So it's something that like when you first get that taste of something you've actually grown and you've put your love into and you've sort of built a relationship with, it's kind of like, wow, I, I had no idea that was missing in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess you guys are seeing those results that when you give people a, a taste of it, literally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they sort of, it sparks that enthusiasm to want to reconnect even more. You see the sparkle in their mm. eyes, like the feedback that we get is just mm. unbelievable. And the, we do work with schools, so we yeah. have kids to grow their own mushrooms and uh, replace chocolate for fundraisers mm -hmm. and things like that. And then 
that is one of the most rewarding parts of the business when you go to schools and talk to kids about yeah. the food they're growing yeah. and they go and educate their parents often. Yeah. Yeah. and it's a, it's a flow and effect and mm -hmm. it's really good for the community, really good yep. for society um, to understand in this modern world we don't need to be living out in the mm. acreage to be able to connect the growing food. Yep. And it is like, because since moving up, uh, we're, we're in Byron Bay here, and since moving here, um, I've been eating a lot more local produce because yeah. there's a lot more farms around and actually going to those farms and um, eating bananas that were literally grown like 200 meters away. And because up here, what a lot of the um, farmers do is they put these like sheds out the front of their farms mm -hmm. and they it's by donation. So you go there and like, you know, it's a, it's an honesty system. So they, they'll say, oh, like we'd, we'd appreciate if you give us this amount of money. Mm. Um, but there's no one there actually like demanding the money. It's, it's um, so rewarding, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, is. I still, I, when I, um, first moved up to Byron and went, um, out on a journey with Matthew and we went and found the custard apples mm, and I was yeah. like, you know, like that experience of eating custard apples that you could see the trees yeah, yeah, from yeah. where they grew from over the fence yeah. that you were putting money into the box. It was such an efficient system yep. and such a rewarding journey yep. to go and source this food mm. that our ancestors did twice a day back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and the, the, the fulfillment, the satiation and fulfillment you get when you've eaten something grown locally, grown with love, um, you know, kind of like pr uh, given to you in that, I love that honesty system, like them just trusting you to sort of like pay back your gratitude mm. and so I've been able to uh, experience that a lot up here, eating like locally grown avocados, locally grown custard apples, and, like in season, like really good foods, locally grown bananas, figs, all these sort of things, pineapples, and my God, like the, the difference in taste, the difference in, in pleasure and satiation in your body that you get rather than a food grown, uh, you know, 2000 kilometers away and frozen and frozen yeah because <laughs> we forget that they, a lot of these fruits a lot of these vegetables and meats and everything they're they're picked and harvested like weeks sometimes possibly mm. even longer before you actually eat them they're, mm. they're del the ripening process is deliberately halted by putting them in dark sheds pumping them with gases that stop it or one thing uh, i'll put a challenge to anyone is like to, to try this out if you've got a lemon tree mm. pick a lemon straight off the tree yep. and then um put it in water and drink it or you know drip some in your mouth or an orange citrus any yep. citrus eat the orange immediately after pick it or can, and then compare that to even five minutes after you've picked it the yep. flavor is completely different yep. even in that five minute period mm, that you've yeah. done from picking it yeah because the vitamin c mm -hmm. levels must be different or yeah. I, I don't know but there's the flavors you can taste so yep. think about the food that's been frozen yep. and then and then transported yep. and then eaten well, um exactly and like because when you think about in nature a food a fruit is meant to ripen on the tree to the very last second until you pick it unless maybe it's fallen to the ground and you pick it off the ground and you know probably not long after and surely that ripening process on the tree would you know being um uh receiving sunlight is a crucial part of it and so what we've done in our modern society is we've handballed over our um handled over the control of our food supply to major corporations mm. and we've completely been disconnected from growing ourselves because we're told the only role you need to play in society is to go make money yeah um and so people you know we, we don't have time to grow our own food we don't have time to make that connection but it's it's kind of sad because we forget what how nice that relationship to nature is and for foods that are actually ripened and and grown like close by and and it's the same with your mushrooms i remember i'm not a huge mushroom fan like i haven't mm. always been a massive mushroom fan mm. but when i tasted your mushrooms it was the freshness and like i was like even watching them grow like i'd kind of like get hungry looking at them i ne I never get to feel that way when i um look at mushrooms in the supermarket mm. and so i think that I love that that's a driving factor with your with life cycle is that it's it's helping people get a connection back because we as I said we've given up control of our food to corporations but at what cost mm -hmm. the cost of the freshness we don't know what they're spraying on them well we do they're spraying ton loads of you know chemicals that are dangerous for us yeah. um, unless you're eating organic we don't know you know when they were harvested and like all, all putting, sorts a, of putting a lot of uh, a large load on the liver, mm, um, yeah. extremely large load. We, our system is constantly battling all these outside yeah. inputs, 
of what air we're breathing in, what chemicals mm. we're eating, yep. um, what stress we're going through from being so in our rational mind, um, and what mushrooms can offer mm -hmm. is preventative medicine. Yep. Um, a large, um, diverse range of, be of properties in medicinal mushrooms mm -hmm. will prepare your immune system for all these things that are coming at you. Yep, yep. Um, whereas modern day medicine that are made uh, in labs mm -hmm. have one, um, one component that's gonna focus to help your health. Mm -hmm. Like a Panadol um, is limited with side effects. Yep. Um, cough medicine mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. Um, the, the mushroom can um, put up a shield going yep. into winter before um, viruses are coming mm -hmm. to attack. Yep. Um, and all the fresh food that we spoke of that we used to eat in the mm -hmm. way we used to eat it in organic, yep. in organic ways. Yep. Um, so we're putting ourselves at loss of nutrients by eating food that's not fresh, but we're also mm -hmm. putting ourselves on dependence of Band-Aid pharmaceuticals. Yep. Um, instead of the preventative approach of eating fresh food mm -hmm. um, with high polysaccharide counts. Yep. Yep. Um, that we can particularly grow mm -hmm. um, with intention to mm -hmm. protect our bodies for longevity, yep. for performance, uh, on an athletic sense, in a work sense, mm -hmm. for mental function, for empathy. Yep. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible, the cool. superpowers of life.